Alright, today I am going to teach you how to make an application which will share a photo uh, with anybody of your choosing with a screen name. At this point I'll be using a generic screen name where, which anybody can make the account and get into the account so we'll not be putting the password protection on here. We'll leave that for another um, tutorial but this is just simply save it to a username and anybody that goes onto this app types in the same username can then view the photos that you have posted to that username. So we're going to start off with the things you need on your uh, application in our uh, designer here. And uh, we're going to first uh, start with uh, bringing in a label. And we're just going to go ahead and just put in user name. Alright, and then we're going to just gonna throw a uh, text field box right down there. Uh, it could be a uh, username again. I'm not going to try and make this look too pretty just because uh, I mean, the aesthetics are pretty easy and you can probably do that yourself. I'm just going to kind of give you the bare bones here how this operates. Uh, button, that's going to give us the login feature. This is going to like log into your actual account. And I'll go ahead and put a log. Again. All right. Now that is what's going to be seen on the first page without them pressing any buttons. Now we're going to go and see what happens after this. This this stuff is not going to be visible to the user until the login button has been pressed. So stuff like the actual image itself, you have to put that function here because that's what's actually going to show the actual image here. And you leave that just as is because we're actually going to fill that in with the picture we take. So no need to put anything else inside there. Um, other thing is we're going to put a label here. And we're going to put that right, it's going to be a label above our text field. And we're going to say, uh, say user name you wish to send the pic to. Now this is the text field to which um, the user is going to want to send the, the picture to. I'm going to leave that blank for the, the hint. It's not going to be really needed. Once again, I'm just trying to show you the concept behind here. And then we're going to then put a button for them to actually send the image to that person. Or I should say it's a username because it's really not going to the person themselves. So then we'll go ahead and put in send the appropriate. Alright, so I got all seven elements in here and we're going to go ahead and proceed into the blocks editor. Alright, from here we can actually start uh, changing the actual functions of all these blocks and everything. And the first thing we're going to want to do is want to then grab our button one click here. So I'd like to start with that. Now please excuse me, I do not label my things, especially when it's like a simple program like this. So uh, please look at the buttons and the labels closely. I know it may confuse some of you, but uh, it does go quite quicker when you do not label things. And always, I have forgotten something. The things that you do not see no matter what, which is our uh, storage here. So on any storage, you want to grab yourself uh, a teeny web DB. That's how we're actually doing it. So I'm going to for to bring that up. And also, I'm going to throw a clock on here. And we're going to need 
the uh, our camera function. Sorry about that. All right. So now we got all those functions out there. Camera, clock, team. All right. So we got everything now. Alright, so with our button one clicked, we're going to want the first thing to be done is to actually call for that actual person's name that we're going for. Because the way that it works, it works just like really uh, teeny db, where it um, it calls to the tag, and then the tag carries a value. And what my plan to do in this procedure is to use the user's name as the tag and then we're going to use the value as the picture this will allow us to then very easily and simply organize everything so when the button one is called we're going to want to get value of that username so that way it grabs that value so go ahead and click any team, web db1, and grab get value, and place it underneath there. And that value or that tag is going to be the username which they first have entered in. So go ahead and grab that text. So now that tag is their username. And anything we store to that tag will then be appeared on here. Now underneath this function is what we're going to start to uh, transition the screen because when the bone one is clicked we're going to want to make things at the top disappear make the things at the bottom reappear. So this is when we start going and grabbing our visibility set things right here and we're going to go ahead and grab our logic and turn them to false. This is label one, this is the label at the very top and we're turning it to false when the button's clicked. We do the same thing for a text box. Grab your set, put it down there. It's going to go ahead and duplicate this. Button one, same deal. That's your login button. I want to set that to false as well alright and then the rest these uh, last four things down here they are going to be turned to true so grab that visibility and set to bring it down the drop down menu here and set to true same deal with everything else here actually in this case since it's another label we can just go ahead and click up here duplicate this one bring it down, change this to label 2, and turn that to true. Same deal with this text box down here. Duplicate text box 2 to true. And then finally for the button, duplicate. Now it becomes button 2, and we turn that to true. I know some of you are saying right now, well, they're going to appear no matter what um, at the beginning. Um, for the ones that I am turning on right now, and it's going to be saying down there and confusing the user. Now, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either go into Designer and manually set them to initialize as visible, but I like to just do it by uh, going to Control here and setting all my stuff underneath the block. Sorry, Screen One. Not bad again here. I'm uh, going to uh, Screen One initialize. All right. And then I'm just going to go over here for the ones from true. I'm going to go ahead and click on that, duplicate, and bring that over here. And then I'm going to set them to false. Let's do that for the rest of them. Duplicate, false, duplicate, false, duplicate, and then false. So now when the screen initializes, they will be set to false no matter what. In some cases, the um, if you use the other one, I've had some bad uh, experiences with it not doing what it's supposed to. 
um, also has screen initialization. Um, we want it to gr go ahead and grab the value from the box. So if it's say like you know you come back and you're the same user in here, we want it to automatically grab this, the last person's image if it is going to be the same. So go ahead and teeny web db get video. Alright, and then you want to grab from text box one once again. It's basically duplicating what we're doing over here so it initializes with it. And then finally we're going to want to set the picture that is not visible at the moment to whatever the last one was. So we're gonna go ahead and grab from our picture down here, grab our image set picture two. Put that down there, and I'll leave that blank for right now until we start getting our variables in there. We'll come back to that. Alright, and then we'll go ahead and we'll start making those um, variables that we're looking for here. So, the only thing that works different from a teeny web DB than to a local one is that you have to, um, there's a a delay in reaction uh, from a web you're looking at something that takes time from it to come back from the user and then to the internet then back to the phone so it's the delay so you have to actually let the um, information be processed and that's why if you go ahead and click on your teeny web db here you're going to see your error which we won't put in that we could but we're not going to do that but the got value. This means that once it finally gets the value back, you have to then figure out what it's going to do with the value after it gets back and then proceed with the code. So this is like an in-between step. So I'm going to go ahead and label and set variables to what um, the get values and set values are. So I'm going to want to have two variables here. First one I'm going to name as a uh, pick for pictures and it doesn't really matter what the starting value of it is, I'm just going to put a blank text box there. Alright, and then I'm going to want to initialize the user's name. And same deal. Duplicate really doesn't matter. Alright. Now we're going to start to put stuff inside here. And the first thing we want to do is we want to get the tag from. And we're going to want to set sorry, tag from. And we're going to set the, um, the username here. Alright, and we're going to set the username so when it gets a value it's going to want to set the global user's name variable to the tag as that gets back. So now if I type in mm into that title block it gets sent all the way back to there, it gets received, saved as an actual store over there in the web and then when it comes back that mm is then sets the initialize username to the mm. So now that variable will be mm if it was done that way. Same thing if you typed in Mike, Mike would be the username now. And we're going to have to do the same thing for the picture. So I'll go ahead and I'm just going to duplicate this, put it underneath there, and just change the username to pick. And we're going to change instead of tag from, we're going to set it from the value so now wherever the value is underneath the tag here will be set as the pick Now we can go back, since we have our variables, we can go back over here to image 1 and we can go ahead and put get in here and we're going to put the pick. 
Now the reason I put a clock in here is that I wanted it to refresh itself. 